the projects. What is the projects and why was it created? The first project was created in 1936. So that should tell you how long this experiment has been into effect. Roughly 82 years of experimentation and depopulation. The Webster or Google definition of project is an individual or collaborative enterprise that is carefully planned and designed to achieve a particular aim. So the project that we will be focusing on is a collaborative enterprise. And notice the definition says it is carefully planned. So let's see if we can find out why it was created, who created them, and what is the particular aim of these projects that most of us grew up in. First, let's check out the different levels of living so we can really understand what the projects are on the pyramid. You have the 6% who live in bliss, away from the normal cares of the world. They live in great establishments and their concern is to maintain control. They don't work, they simply advise and devise. And they don't live in neighborhoods. The surrounding areas are neighboring them. That's the difference. In this class, they eat with $10,000 spoons. I'm just telling y'all the truth, man. Then we have the middle class who consist of the lawyers, brokers, congressmen, naval lieutenants, movie directors, authors, and etc. Their lifestyle is usually bland though compared to the 6%, but they make enough on their jobs to easily pay their bills and have money left over to see the world in its festivities. The majority of this middle class falls under the Masonic code, you better know it. Their neighborhoods are well taken care of and the crime in these neighborhoods are little to none. These are the neighborhoods where the new neighbors get pies brought to their houses, housewarming gifts and the milkman sets bottles on the porch for your cats and these neighborhoods have neighborhood watch groups, special squad cars that daily scan the areas to make sure it is safe and the response time for 911 calls is surprisingly fast. Then we have the projects. An area created by the elites to house those who they feel are bottom feeders. These areas usually breed your factory workers, your city workers, your muscle to keep this country afloat. It reminds me of how in the movie, the Titanic, all them rich folks was on the board or on the boat enjoying themselves while the workers down low were feeding the ship is cold so that they can keep on selling and so the rich folk can keep enjoying themselves. The entire trip, the rich people never seem to think about the slaves at the bottom who are the reason that the ship is moving at all. That's how the projects are designed, y'all. Every project always gonna have those liquor stores posted up on the corners. The government, which is really a one world government now, brings heavy guns and drugs into these neighborhoods consistently. How else do you think we get it? Most people in the projects don't have enough money to get out of their zone to go and get these weapons and drugs so they bring it to them. They work them to death on jobs to the point when they get home to relax, most grab a beer or they indulge in a drug of their choice just to get them to that next day or next week of starting all over again being a slave. Most of you have heard of a program called Section 8. Lots of kids going to school when I grew up would laugh at and tease if they found out you grew up in a Section 8 neighborhood. Now, if this is the 8th section, then where are the other seven sections? The other seven sections are higher up the pyramid. Section eight is the section you hit right before section nine, which is homelessness. The queen, the pope, and the top devil worshipers occupy section number one. And this is why the good Lord said in the word, when he returns, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So they occupy section number one. Section two, three, and four, are the milk on the front porch sections y'all section five and six is the section of people living in between the milk on the front porch section and the projects section seven consists of the people in the projects and section eight consists of the people who are one step away from section nine which is homelessness people are placed in the projects to be groomed for slave work giving minor so-called gifts over time like a 
new iPhone, a uh, little itty bitty raise on the job. And every time you get that raise on the job, the price of everything around you raises up also. So that makes your raise on the job null and void. But they give you little gifts over time like a new iPhone and a drone to play with to occupy your time along with faked and rigged sports and TV networks that repeat the same shows over and over and over and we watch it over and over and over as if it's new. They have always told us that they use white mice for lab studies but the problem is most of us have never seen a white mice. What they're telling you is, we as humans have been the mice the entire time. This is why you hear people all the time say, I'm just trying to make it out the hood. I'm trying to make it out the trap. I'm trying to make it out the project. Sort of like rats in a maze trying to find their way out to the cheese. Now why is it that people in sections 9, 8, and 7 are always looking for a way out while people in sections 1 through 6 are comfortable? It is because it is a well designed to keep the rich rich and the poor thirsting to become rich. And to have them thinking that if they just do a little more overtime on the job, that they might be able to eat from the tree of success in a field of trees that hold opportunity in this world. It brings me back. <laughs> See, they want them to think that they're eating from the tree of success. But really they end up what they end up tasting is only a leaf off of one tree in a field full of trees that hold opportunity in this world. It brings me back to a movie I watched earlier called The Room. In this movie a lady was held captive in a small room by a man and forced to have sex with him and he would go to town and bring her back necessities if she was good all to this one room. She was in that room for years and ended up having a child in that room. The child started to grow and the child became a victim in that small room and all the child knew was that small room he saw nothing else so his mind couldn't grasp anything else this is sort of like the design of the projects our parents grew up in it so we grew up in it an area where 90 percent of all killings in the world happen a place where the majority latch on to these fake tv personalities in hopes of getting lucky one day and making it out it also reminds me of two other shows one being an episode of Black Mirror called 15 Million Metrics or Merits, which describes the life of a bottom feeder to the T, y'all. It shows a group confined to small rooms all day. A room that is closed in that feeds them nothing but artificial assessments and then they go to work every day cycling a bike. Just cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling away. And each time they cycle, they accumulate points. Those points can be saved up. And once they reach 15 million points, they can purchase a ticket to perform in front of the host of American Idol. And then those hosts decide if you go back to the bikes and be a slave or if you will be granted access into a better life. The interesting part about this show is the guy worked like a dog to gain his 15 million points and when he moved up through the idol show they only placed him in a bigger room ain't that something that's how the project game is most project kids attend public schools because how could they muster up around sixty thousand dollars to send their child to an elite private school in these public schools they run everything by the pyramid and in the public schools, they put you through a series of tests to see what they're going to do with you. Tests are taken and judgment is passed. Very few make it out of these schools and into a better life. The queen appoints major or mayors in each state to keep watch over the well oiled machine they created called the projects. They are the gatekeepers who allow the drugs and guns into these places so that they will never overpopulate. They feel if the drugs don't kill them, then the guns and violence will. If they see the numbers growing too high, they would just spray chemtrails over the area and get everyone sick, slam them with huge hospital bills, place them in debt until they ultimately move to section 8, then 9, then death. See how the pyramid is designed? It is designed. See how 
see how they get you is they make up these fake character rappers like 50 cent and jay-z for instance they aren't from the hood yeah they may have shot a few scenes in some of the hoods but they are not from the hood they are in the position they are because that's the position they originally were supposed to be in through blood through the bloodline but they make it seem like they came up through the grit and grind and the projects where you are so you will appreciate and adore them more and it will give you hope i always hear that phrase like you know if jay-z made it if 50 cent made it i can make it but make it where to a secret society devil worshiping cult of satanists who pride themselves on getting others to worship them they see it like this y'all they see it just like this give them hope and they'll work longer harder because they will always feel like the prize is right around the corner and you might say hey what about the kid who went to my public school and and he went pro in football or basketball well you better check that person's history and their parents history because most of the time when you see one or two slip through the cracks they are talented beyond measure and their talent can be pimped sort of like the movie life how when Bohem Bokeem Woodbine you know what I'm saying he was able to be pardoned out of prison because of his baseball talent but most of the time when you see people get pardoned from the hood or projects their parents have Masonic ties or their talent is so good that it cannot be passed up as a business move. Most activists, y'all, are in place just to maintain order of the pyramid. The activists in the cities act like liaisons, which means they are the middleman between the crime and the mayor. Most activists have been briefed on how the pyramid works already, and mostly all, if not all, are attached to the Masonic Code. The activists work hand in hand with the gang leaders and they all have periodic scheduled secluded meetings with the mayors to discuss the condition of the hood and the projects. Kind of like when you got up in school with your school project, you had your board, you had your little pointing stick and you would tell the teacher, this is my project. That's the same thing that they do in these secluded meetings to tell the higher ups up the pyramid how the projects are going. And then they report all the information back to the queen. Everything has to go through the order process of the pyramid. If the area starts to get too populated, overpopulated, they simply bring in more guns and drugs. Knowing that more guns and drugs in a impoverished society and in and, and, and impoverished area will mean more genocide. That's it. Does the Queen of England have a liquor store next to her castle? No. That should tell you the difference. But she does sip from 21,000 bottles of wine called Chate. Huh? 50% of the people living in the projects will not even accumulate $21,000 in five years. So what is a so what's a sip to the queen? It's five years of back breaking work to a bottom feeder. Ever seen the movie Training Day? Well, what about the scene where Denzel is in the car with Officer Hoyt? Officer Hoyt being played by Ethan Hawke. In that scene, Denzel basically describes the pyramid scheme, but in a lesser degree of how I'm giving it to you right now. He said they give the top drug dealers and gang members drugs and guns and have them report back to them. It's the same level of satanic hierarchy everywhere. Then you wonder how a major drug dealer is able to stay afloat while his carriers on his block get arrested. It's because every now and then the dealer scratches the mayor's back and hands him over vital drug bust information. But sometimes the mayor is even asked to provide the drug dealer reporting to him and they put them on the chopping block as well. And then they go out and they find another person to replace them. Easy as that. Drugs create revenue and residuals. Anything in this world that rakes in a whole lot of revenue and residuals will get attached to the pyramid scheme. They give us movies depicting the hood. And most of the time they slap based on the true story at the beginning and we take it all for face value as if it's the code we all should be living by. When you were little, how many times did you watch something on TV then go outside or what have you and try to mimic it? I did it a lot. That part of us has never left y'all and those who have studied us all this time, they know it as well. 
This is why they give you a Cardi B or Future, a Young Thug and others. And they shove them down your throats and make you like them. I mean, let's be for real. You might not even like a song at first, but when you hear it over a thousand times, it kind of grows on you. The same thing applies with the perception of these characters that they portray in front of our faces. And stop thinking these celebrities love y'all. If they loved or care for you, then why aren't you get, getting invitations to their little parties, their weddings, or even just little, little gatherings? These people don't love you, neither do they know you, neither do they want to take the time to know you. Every top rapper or singer gets his own brand of liquor. Why do you think that is? Hm. Then it's pushed right into the projects. They get you to worship them, then they create clothing lines where shirts are roughly about $500 and the shoes sometimes cost more because they know the pyramid scheme and they know the average bottom feeder is only making around twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year and if we idolize these jokers we will spend so just to look like them we'll roughly spend $8,000 out of our yearly $30,000 budget and let me not even start on the vanity for the vehicles that they put in our face. But in conclusion, listen, the activists and mayors of your cities are behind most of the crime as well, y'all. They know peace turns into unity and unity turns into people coming together, matching ideas. And then that leads to an uprising because we'll be woke. So when it gets too quiet, they create disorder and are usually the first on the scene <laughs> to control the chaos they just created. Mm? They know all the gang members. They know how to create beef back and forth between the gangs. They know how to do it. They create it. The explaining of this pyramid scheme is not to get you to hate people with money, but simply to show you the order of operations that Satan has designed and that we were born into. Some people say the pyramid scheme works because it maintains order. I say it is deceptive because they don't tell you about this order on the news. They make it seem like we are all just equal and some people just happen to look up to obtain the American dream, but that is far from the truth. There are hundreds of diseases out there and we never hear the wealthy being sick from any of them. Why is that? We never see the CPS or Child Protective Services getting in the Queen's business. Why is that? Public school students come out of high school with a diploma, a piece of paper in a frame and the top private school students come out of high school already owning corporations. We are the machine and the legwork for this entire mockery of a nation and we need to find a way to come together regardless of nationality or even faith because I can't make you believe in Jesus Christ. But I am asking you all to realize that the person next to you is not the enemy. The enemy is high up the pyramid. The projects.